It's mid-September and the height of migration for the monarch butterfly. A small group of the butterflies is attracted to the bright yellow, honey-scented goldenrod that is in full bloom along this creek in central Illinois. They will need all the nectar they can find to give them the energy reserves they need on their long migration journey. The monarchs are headed to a remote area of central Mexico, nearly 2,000 miles to the south, where the butterflies will spend the winter. The summer has been hot and dry, but the goldenrod is doing remarkably well considering the months-long drought. And were it not for the creek, which the mowers cannot reach easily because of the steep banks, the monarchs would be hard-pressed to find such an abundance of flowers at summer's end. That's especially true in the Midwest and heavily farmed states like Illinois and Iowa, with farm fields often stretching from roadside to roadside Agriculture has pushed native wildflowers like goldenrod and asters to the very fringes. Those are important food sources for the monarch butterfly in the fall when it migrates from Canada, the American Midwest, and the East Coast to Mexico. Smaller numbers of monarch butterflies have become the norm rather than the exception, and that's true all across North America. The population of the monarch has been in decline for more than a decade, Studies point to a simple but not easily remedied reason, the loss of habitat. Not only are native wildflowers disappearing, but there is one plant in particular that is becoming harder and harder to find, and it is crucial for the survival of the monarch butterfly. As milkweed goes, so goes the monarch butterfly. Milkweed once flourished in the vast expanse of the tall grass prairie that once covered 170 million acres in North America, including most of Iowa and 60% of Illinois. Within 50 years of John Deere's introduction of the steel moldboard plow, much of that prairie had disappeared. And what the plow didn't destroy, powerful herbicides and mowers are. Since the end of World War II, Milkweed has been mowed and sprayed with herbicides at a relentless pace, and that has important implications for the future of the monarch butterfly. When the milkweed flowers are in bloom, the air is thick with their perfumed aroma. The flowers are extremely aromatic and laden with nectar that not only attracts the monarch, but also honeybees and other beneficial insects. Milkweed gets its name from the sticky white sap in its leaves and stems. The plant contains toxins that make it distasteful and unpleasant to many creatures, but not to the monarch butterfly. Milkweed is the only plant that monarch caterpillars eat, the only plant on which monarch butterflies lay their eggs. For monarchs, milkweed is indeed the plant of life. Even areas that are supposed to be protected are at risk like this nine mile stretch of prairie that was mowed despite the warning signs. There is no safe haven for milkweed as prairie and pasture have been turned into row crops. For example, in Illinois, which calls itself the prairie state, less than one tenth of one percent of native undisturbed prairie remains. Even the country is no longer the country, with roadsides mowed to look like nice, neat suburban lawns. In the Midwest, milkweed is now relegated to parks, nature preserves, roadside ditches, and small patches of restored and reconstructed prairie, like this small plot of milkweed surrounded on two sides by cornfields and on the other by an electric substation. That doesn't leave much room for the monarch butterfly and other wildlife. According to a recent study, between 1999 and 2010, the same period in which farmers switched to Roundup Ready corn and Roundup Ready soybeans, the number of monarch eggs in the Midwest declined by an estimated 81%. One half of the population of overwintering monarch butterflies comes from the Midwest, and those overwintering numbers have declined substantially. In 1996, 
monarch butterflies were spread out over an estimated 45 acres at their overwintering sites in Mexico. In the winter of 2011 to 2012, researchers counted monarchs on only a mere seven acres. The overwintering population of monarchs in the winter of 2012 to 2013 is one of the smallest on record. The male and female monarch butterflies couple tail to tail. The female then flies off and lays eggs on the underside of a milkweed leaf. On average, a female will lay 50 to 70 eggs per day and from 300 to 1,000 eggs during her short lifespan of two to six weeks. There is often only one egg per leaf. Research has shown that when there are many eggs on a plant, they are more vulnerable to predators. That's because when a predator like a spider finds one egg, it's much easier to find eggs that are nearby. The egg is very small, the size of a pinhead and has ridges like a miniature cantaloupe. It takes three to five days for the caterpillar to hatch from the egg. The egg turns dark when the caterpillar is ready to emerge. The dark spot on the egg is actually the caterpillar's head. It eats its way out of the egg as you can see from this speeded up sequence. Once the caterpillar creates an opening, it pauses for a second as if unsure what to do next. Then it peeks out and expands its compressed body as it crawls out of the egg. The tiny caterpillar emerges into a vast green and succulent world. In fact, it is a very edible world as the caterpillar starts eating the milkweed leaf almost immediately. About half the size of a grain of rice when it emerges the caterpillar will grow rapidly. It goes through five stages or instars as it grows. During each stage, the caterpillar will shed its skin. Toxins produced from the milkweed are ingested by the caterpillar and will give it some protection from predators, especially birds. The toxins do not protect them from other insects like the tachnid fly, the stink bug, and assassin beetle. Diseases also will take their toll on the caterpillar and the adult butterfly. It's been estimated that only one out of every 10 eggs laid will become an adult monarch butterfly because of disease and predators. The tiny caterpillar explores the milkweed leaf and then turns around as if it suddenly remembered something. It heads back to the empty egg casing and will devour it before once again starting on the milkweed leaf. The caterpillar grows from a mere speck on a leaf to a full-grown and fully mobile caterpillar of about two inches in 10 days or so. A monarch caterpillar has a voracious appetite it spends its day and much of the night eating milkweed leaves as it grows rapidly. Larger caterpillars eat through the mid vein of the milkweed leaf, which helps the monarch avoid the sticky latex. A hungry caterpillar can eat one milkweed leaf in a day with mandibles like a buzzsaw that can make short order of a milkweed leaf. The caterpillar seems to have one mission, and that is to consume as much milkweed as it can in a short period leaves, the stem, milkweed flowers, and even the seed pods are all fair game for the caterpillar as it grows. Monarch caterpillars have six pairs of very simple eyes. Nevertheless, their vision is poor. They use their tubercles, which are often mistaken for antenna, to help guide them to food. Sometimes there can be two caterpillars on the same leaf. They are willing to share, but don't like to get too close.
And with all that milkweed going in, a lot comes out too in the form of tiny green pellets. Once the caterpillar is fully grown, it starts looking for a place to attach itself and turn into a chrysalis. A caterpillar can travel a surprising distance in its quest for the perfect spot for its transformation. That can be all sorts of places, from the side of a building, to a blade of grass, to a low branch, even a milkweed leaf. Once it finds the perfect spot, the caterpillar uses sort of a Velcro system as it makes a silk pad on a branch or stem. The caterpillar then attaches the end of its abdomen with a hook-covered appendage known as a cremaster. Before the transformation into a chrysalis, the caterpillar forms a J-shape. It will hold this shape for up to 12 hours. When the transformation starts, the caterpillar goes limp. Its body pumps itself like an accordion, trying to pull the skin up to the point where it is anchored to the blade of grass. It's like trying to remove a suit that's two sizes too small. The metamorphosis takes only a few minutes to complete but the caterpillar is extremely vulnerable and everything has to go just right. Not all caterpillars will become a chrysalis. As the skin stretches, it splits behind the head and the green pupa pops out. The skin continues to be pulled up, and the chrysalis quickly takes shape as the skin is folded into a hoop at the top. At this point, the pupa does a steady hula dance as it tries to wiggle the skin loose. Usually the skin falls off, but in this instance it stays put. The skin can attach to the abdomen of the chrysalis and damage the metamorphosis. However, in this case, the caterpillar was successful in the transformation into a chrysalis. At this point, it is no longer a caterpillar and not yet a butterfly. It will stay in the pupa state for about 10 days. During that time, a magical transformation takes place. As the pupa transforms into a butterfly, the black and orange wings can be easily seen through the now translucent casing. When the butterfly is ready to come out, it presses its forelegs against the shell. As it pushes out, its abdomen pulsates and pushes down. A door on the case opens and the butterfly, its wings still neatly folded, emerges.
This is a crucial time for the monarch as it struggles to gain a foothold. The ridges at the top of the shell where the abdomen formed provide footing. If the monarch cannot get a foothold, it could fall and die, but that's rarely the case. But on occasion, a butterfly may emerge with its wings deformed or its body diseased. Unable to fly, it faces a certain death. As the butterfly dangles precariously from its shell, its abdomen pumps the wings with fluid and they slowly unfurl. The whole process could take several hours as the wings dry and fully extend. The butterfly will also release waste from its abdomen during this period. As the wings unfurl, the butterfly also tries out its new proboscis used for gathering nectar. As the sun warms the butterfly, it will extend its wings into a slow and steady flap, getting its wing muscles ready for flight. Male butterflies have two black dots on either side of their hind wings near the abdomen. Females do not have the dots and the veins on their wings are thicker. The wings are a marvel of engineering. Up close, they seem to be woven of the finest fabric. The wings are amazingly strong and will serve the monarch well on its long migration. In North America, there are four generations of monarch butterflies annually. The non-migrating monarchs live two to six weeks and lay eggs from May to October in most of North America. It is the fourth generation born in the months of August, September, and October that will migrate to central Mexico. That generation can live eight to nine months and fly an amazing 2,500 miles or more as it flits and flitters to Mexico and then back to the United States and Canada. It is one of the most incredible journeys in all of nature. No one knows exactly how monarchs find their way to their overwintering grounds, but for an insect that weighs less than one gram, it is an extraordinary journey. The monarchs start their migration in September and often travel together and stay in large clumps on trees. They start arriving at the reserves in Mexico in November and will stay until February when they start their journey back north, laying eggs on milkweed plants along the way. But with the monarch population in decline and milkweed, the critical food source for caterpillars becoming more scarce, the question becomes, how much longer can this dazzling insect and its long back and forth migration continue. According to Chip Taylor, director of Monarch Watch at the University of Kansas, the scale of the loss of habitat is so big that unless we compensate for it in some way, the population of the monarch butterfly will continue to decline to the point that it will disappear. Are we willing as humans to let another piece of the earth's beauty fall by the wayside? We can all help the monarch by growing milkweed along with native wildflowers 
and asking landowners not to mow ditches or to spray herbicides on small prairie patches. The future of the monarch butterfly, as with all of nature, is in our hands. Thank you.